and the 35th verse. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I'm reading from a teacher from the Holman Standard, so if you have the King James or a different translation, the word would be just a little bit different, but we'll all end up in the same place together. You are recording this, correct? Okay. In every way that I have shown you that by laboring like this, it is necessary to help the weak and to keep in mind the words of our Lord Jesus. For he said, who said? He, who's he? Jesus. For Jesus said, it is what? It is more what? Blessed to give than to receive. Who said that? Jesus. The preacher didn't say that. Who said it? Jesus. Okay, Jesus did. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our hearts. Let us be a people who are a generous people who serve you with everything we've got. Speak to us now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. One of the hallmarks of, I have been blessed now in my ministry career of be 27 years this year. I have been blessed to pastor three different churches, uh, all of which I have been blessed to see turn around. And when I mean turn around, I'm talking about turn around in attendance wise. When I went to Owen County, we started with 20 people. When was, within six months, we were we were running over 100. I went to Montgomery County, we were running about 30 people. Uh, we got as high as 175, balanced out about 120 thereabouts on a regular basis. And then here we've seen what God's done here in these last uh, two and a half years. Uh, one of the hallmarks of the churches that that I have have been able to be a part of is that I've led them into the ideal of generosity, being more generous. I'll never forget uh, the ideal uh, in Mount Sterling with all of a sudden people, this church was right on the side of the main road that came out of Clay City over in Montgomery County uh, and so out of nowhere people just started stopping by, asking for help wanting, wanting help, wanting financial help wanting food, wanting this, that and the other and we made a decision uh, we were flat broke as a church I could tell you a story uh, later some other time about exactly how we got flat broke as a church but when I got there they were flat broke and so the question became preacher how are we going to give in the midst of our brokenness and my, su my suggestion was this is that look we've got to be faithful where God has got us and if we'll be faithful where we're at and prove to him that we can be trusted God will bless us with more and so people become the, became out of the woodwork, man, and we began to try to meet the needs of everybody. And we went literally, our church, God blessed it, from going from $300 an offering a Sunday to $3,000 a Sunday. Uh, and God just, just done wonderful things because of generosity. And generosity, ladies and gentlemen, is not a trait we're born with. How many of y'all have ever dealt with a newborn baby? You know a newborn baby doesn't understand what the generosity is. They're all the time receiving, especially at 3 o'clock in the morning when they're hungry. We only think about having our immediate needs met, as any parent with a newborn baby will tell you. But in time, children begin to learn to enjoy giving. How many of you all have had your child, when he got a little bit older, bring you some dandelions? Mama, bring you some, you know, some dandelions. Here, Mama, these are for you. We understand the idea when we get a little bit older about giving. In the same manner or the same way, we can learn about giving uh, to the Lord. At first, our contributions may seem like that they're not a whole lot, that they don't mount to anything. But once you begin to experience God's faithfulness in supplying your needs, your trust will grow and you'll be more willing to be generous in, in your giving. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 through 6. Paul talks to the group, uh, a group of believers in Macedonia who had learned this uh, firsthand. They heard about an economic need in the Jerusalem church and they wanted to help. And Paul used their example, the Macedonian example, here in Corinthians to encourage the Corinthian church to do the same thing. He says here in verse 1, We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of our God, uh, the grace of God granted to the churches of Macedonia during a severe testing by affliction. Their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed into wealth of their generosity. 
I testify that on their own accord, to their own ability, and beyond their ability, they begged us for insistently, uh, begged us insistently for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. Now let me tell you something. That right there is a pastor's dream to have his people come to me. Preacher, can you get the offering plate out here right now? <laughs> In 27 years, it's never happened. <laughs> but I am waiting for the day that a church says, Preacher, pass the offering first thing. Mark, shut up with the announcements. We want to give our offering. <laughs> but this is what happened. They begged us for the privilege of sharing in the ministry to the saints. And not just as we had hoped. Next verse. Instead, they gave of themselves, especially to the Lord, then to us by God's will. So we urge Titus that just as he had begun, he should complete also uh, should also complete this grace to you. Now look at this first part of this verse. Go back to the very beginning of this this particular verse, and I want you to look at the need, the, the situation that Macedonian churches find themselves in. We want you to know about, brothers, about the grace of, the, of God granted to the churches of Macedonia. Gr granted during, look what it says, a severe testing by affliction. So the church itself, when it's asked to be generous, is under a severe aff affliction. What we tend to do sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, is say, well, when the time's right, we, you know, when we get things together, when we get a little bit more, when we get, you know, when we get this bill paid off, when we, when we get a little bit more money, if I ever get a raise, they didn't wait for that. They were in the midst of a severe uh, situation. And it says, they, uh, during the severe testing by affliction, their abundance of joy and their deep poverty. Now, this was a church that was broke. Now you have to understand the Jewish idea, uh, you know, back in the day when the Jews, the Jews gave over 60 or 70 percent of their income to all the different uh, temple taxes and tithes and all this stuff. And so this church was in a deep financial situation. The people were impoverished. They were poor. But they ended up, look at what it says, uh, in the midst of their poverty overflowed into the wealth, next, next slide, of their generosity. They didn't let their financial circumstance keep them from being a generous people. I testify, Paul says in verse 3, on their own accord to their ability, they gave according to their ability, but then he says they went beyond their ability. Now the only way to do that is sacrifice. They sacrificed something for the kingdom work. Now again, this was, not going, this was going to the Jerusalem church. There was a problem in Jerusalem. It wasn't their church. They're in the region of Macedonia. They're sending back to a church that probably most of them had never been to, would never ever go to, didn't know anybody in it, and probably would never know anybody in it. But they heard of a need around them. And they raised up and said, yes, we're in bad situation. Yes, we're strapped out in debt. Yes, we're in a poor economic situation. But God has compelled us that little is much if God is in it. Well, I'm going to tell you, God can take a little bit and do so much work with it. Folks, if, you, you, if you've never trusted God with your time, with your talent, with your treasure, God can take what little bit you feel like that you have to offer and do some tremendous things with it if you'll trust Him. And so here they, they look and say, you know, we don't have it, but we're going to be generous. And they begged us for the opportunity to take an offering. <laughs> So I want to talk to you for just a few minutes, and I'm not going to get through all these today. But I want to talk about being a generous person in 2017. As a matter of fact, I titled this sermon, Being Generous in a Selfish World. Think about that. We live in a really selfish world where it's all about me, it's all about I. It's me, 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 me. One of the hallmarks, I believe, uh, uh, as believers is we learn to be generous in our time, in our talent, and in our treasure. First of all, number one, generosity isn't based on abundance. Sometimes we make that old saying, well, I would give more if I had more. But the reality is, if we aren't generous with what we've got, we'll not be generous with more if God would give it to us. 
Be faithful with what you got. And, and over the years, people ask me the question when they talk about giving. Well, preacher, what should I give? Should I give? Should if I'm going to tithe, should I tithe on the net? Should I tithe on the gross? Uh, you know, I don't want to get into legalism. You do what God asks you to do, but be generous. Meet a need. If God, when the offering plate's passed, see what you can do. We could all probably, if we were honest, we could probably all do just a little bit better. Now think about it for just a minute. The way to figure this out is, is look at, at your spending during a week's time. Now I can tell you from me based on, on what I do, sometimes during the shift, maybe twice, I'll go to the pop machine at, at, at my work and them things have gone up now to $1.50. What if I cut out one pop and took that money and said, okay, I'm going to commit this week $1.50 and I'm going to get rid of just one pop and that one pop that I give up, I'm going to give it to the Lord. I'm going to give that $1.50 to God. Now, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but what if you got into that habit? Giving becomes contagious. Generosity becomes contagious. And so we can all look at our, our spending, the things that we do, the things that we, we, you know, we throw money away. Maybe, maybe you never give before in your life and you're figuring out, how am I going to try to do something like this? What is, what in the, how in the world am I going to work this out? Because here's, I don't preach many tithing messages, and this is really not a tithing message. This is on you being a generous people. A lot of times people come into church and there's, there's generally a couple regards of people in church. There's people who've never heard about giving. There's people who would like to give, but they're so far in debt and they're living payment, to, you know, paycheck to paycheck, they can't. And so I don't, and secondly, I don't know who gives what. That has been a policy of mine. I don't ask, don't know. So if I'm stepping on your toes, that's between you and the good Lord. Don't want to know. Um, you know, giving is between you and Him. But what if we gave up a McDonald's one time a week? Now, I don't know about you, but I've noticed that as soon as, since we've become a family of four, uh, a family of four teenagers, uh, or family of four with two teenagers. <laughs> I don't have two extra kids I'm not telling you about. <laughs> Since we, McDonald's, Pam and I used to be able to eat McDonald's for three bucks. She wouldn't eat nothing. <laughs> and I ate it all. You can't take a family of four to McDonald's now for, 30, for about 30 bucks. You know it, right? What if we gave up McDonald's? Cut it one time. One time. There's, there's your generosity right there. See, there's all kinds of creative areas that you look in your life that you, could, you can be generous in. But it has to do with your heart. It really does. It really, you want to have to be a generous people. I want to be generous with my time. I want to be generous with my talent. I want to be generous with, with, um, with what God has given me financially. I want to be able to say that God is my source and God is my resource. I want to be able to say that God has blessed me. I want to be able to say that because I have trusted God with what I've got, He has given me more than I could ever think or imagine. I'll never forget when, when we decided we were going to come here. It was a difficult challenge. I don't know if I've shared this with everybody, but it was a difficult decision for us. One, not only you know, making the change after being somewhere for a long time, but two, the financial side of things. We took a 50% pay cut to come to here to be with you. And How are we going to make it? What are we going to do? How are we going to make ends meet? Because we're like the, a typical family it, it, with raising kids. You is What you bring in is what goes out. And we were bringing in and we were shipping out. And so the mathematics didn't make sense. How were we going to do this? But we knew we were called to do it. So we said, okay, we're not going to worry about the mathematics. We're going to let God take care of the mathematics. And I look back now and can tell you that God has blessed us in ways that I couldn't even begin to think or imagine. Let me share with you one way how God blessed us by doing what He asked us to do. This year on my job, my secular job, they got, those folks got 2% raises, which was really good to get 2% raise because they hadn't gotten a raise in quite some time, and so 2% is better than anything, and I didn't expect to get anything because I'm considered a full-time temporary. So, you know, I if I got something, I got something, but I wasn't expecting anything. 
One day out of the blue, my manager comes to me. We've been praying about this and praying, asking God to, uh, you know, how are you going to meet our needs? We're going to trust you. We, you know, we don't know how this is going to work out, but we're going to trust you. And so my manager come to me and said, uh, do you remember at the last football game, and I really didn't remember, I, maybe I must have said it, uh, but he said, do you remember at the last football game, he said, man, you're working me to death. You're going to have to give me a raise. And I said, yeah, I guess I did. I really don't remember, but if I did, I hope you heard it. <laughs> And he said, well, you said that and said, uh, I've been thinking about it. And, and I went and uh, talked to Human Resources and uh, here's what we done. And he said, we got you a raise. And I said, oh, man, that's great. You know, I'll take whatever we can get, you know. Anything's good. Oh, it's, it's great, man. And so he said, yeah, I, said, I appreciate what you do. And he said, uh, looked at me and said, well, don't you want to know how much it is? I said, no, I don't care. Just as long as I know I'm getting something, that's all that really matters. He said, well, I'm going to tell you. And he gave me this figure. And I said, okay, well, I appreciate that, man. And I went back and I sat down at my desk and I was just blown away. <coughs> now, I told you a minute ago that everybody else there got 2%. When he handed me this figure and I sat down and started calculating, I realized you can't outgive God. You can't go wrong when you're doing what God asked you to do. When everybody else got 2 calculated that number out and I said, well, that can't be right. Pam works in the business office on her job, so I give it to her. I said, you figure that out. You're smarter than I am at math. You do that. So she done the calculator thing. There's the same number. Everybody got two. I got 20. I've never had anything like that happen to me before. Lunch on pastor. <laughs> Because God blesses obedience. And when you're faithful to do what He asks you to do, He'll meet your need. Some of you know that. That you've gone without, with, through job losses and you, you didn't know how you was going to make it. You didn't know what you was going to do. And God opened up jobs for you and it might not have been the same amount of money. But you look back and say, you know what, we're doing just as good now as what we were before. Uh, because God blesses His people. So be generous. When you have the opportunity to give, be generous. Give of your time. Give of your talent. Give of your treasure. Bless people. That's what we're talking about here. Now, not everything's financial. You don't have to think, well, preacher's talking about money today. You know, he wants more money in offering plates so we can give him a bigger raise. You know, that no, it's not everything's financial. Some of you have great, incredible talent that you could, you could help somebody. I know one of our ladies here is, is helping with the clothing closet. I see things in the paper all the time asking for help. Or not in the paper, but on Facebook, asking for help sorting clothes at the clothing closet. Some of you now know how longer work on a regular basis. You could represent Beaver Baptist by going to the clothing closet once a week or the food pantry or by offering uh, uh, these families some help. I'm sure that if you went and asked her today, what could we do? They'll probably find something for you to do, or some way that you can help. And that's called being generous and making a name known for the Lord. That we do this in the name of the Lord. We're helping our community. We're doing things for Him. One of the things that, that I want to see us do in 2017 is have a larger footprint in our community. And so I'm working with Tom and Barbara about how we start back this feeding thing that we used to do over in Georgetown. We're going to do it here in this community. And we're going to make a difference in this community with people who are helping to make a difference. Now we'll let you know, know a little bit more about that once we get all the particulars worked out. But I want us to be known as a church that not only gives, but they give their time, they give their talent, they give their treasure, they, they are there to meet needs. We've had the opportunity over the last little bit to help to help different families. Our, our ladies uh, uh, give all kinds of things, cards and all that stuff. They're giving their time. They're giving their talent. I want to ask you, do just a little bit more. Look around you this week. Who could you help? Look around you this week. Who could you be generous to? Look around in your workplace for the single mom who's struggling to make ends meet. And you might be like these people here in the Macedonian church saying, Man, I've got my own bills. I've got my own situation to take care of. I've got my own needs to meet. Do a little bit more. In the midst of their situation, they gave just a little bit more. My friends that Don traveled with us and sang, they were here with us last week. They're back again today. I found out that they do foster care. Wow, can you imagine that? 
No, I can't. No. I got two that I'm just waiting the day till they get out of the house. I'm just counting down the minutes. They sometimes come back though. Yeah, that ain't happening. Because we're going to pass, a, if we live in the parsonage when they leave, I'm coming to the business meeting passing a rule or something in the business meeting that says they can't come back. <laughs> Somehow or another, we're going to keep them out of there. Now Don and Sherry went and had a kid after their, other two, their two oldest was almost grown. They went and had a kid of their own. Now I thought that was crazy when he'd done that uh, 15 years ago. I said, have you lost your mind? Your two boys are almost grown. You went and had another little baby. But you got to understand, during that time in our singing group, it was baby fever going on. And these girls just couldn't, you know, one girl, one guy, his wife had a baby. And the rest of them, they all just wanted baby, baby, babies. And so Don's was almost grown. And then he got this this new little baby and, and then I look up 15 years later and he comes in here last week with all these kids. Where would all these come from? <laughs> Haven't you learned after the, after the last time you've done that? But they foster. I know people who give their homes open to people who otherwise don't know where they would be. I know people who help feed people who otherwise wouldn't have a meal. May, may it be said of us as a church, when the history of this period is written, when the history of this period of us together is written, may the people who come after us be able to say that they were a people who changed their community because of their willingness to give. Now how does it start? I've got three other points I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i give you later. But how does it start? It starts with you. It starts with you making a willing individual decision that I'm going to look around me and see what needs I can meet. May not have a whole lot to offer. May not have a whole lot to give. But out of what I give, I'm going to look around me and see this is how this whole thing started here. What we're doing here today was two people just observing a float that we were trying to beat in the Christmas parade. No offense, but we're glad we beat you. <laughs> it, well, that's right. We got the ribbon. I thought we was getting a trophy this year. No, that's, we didn't get a trophy. We got a ribbon. Uh, but that's okay. That's how that started. What, and now, how can we meet this need? What can we do here? How can we help? How can we make a difference? That's what it takes in your individual life as you look around and say, you know what? I want to be a person who's, who is just like Jesus. Because Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And there is a lot of truth to that. My mom complained about me this, this Christmas because she kept asking me, what do you want for Christmas? Well, I don't want anything. Unless you won't give me a bucket full of money, that's really about really the only thing I want. And I'll take it and pay off a bunch of bills you know, with that bucket full of money. And I didn't get a bucket full of money for Christmas, but I got some clothes and stuff. But as you get older, you realize that stuff that used to mean so much to you really don't mean a whole lot anymore. I mean, come on guys, back when, when Mark had hair... <laughs> We used to like, you know, we used to like to drive, you know, fast cars or fix up our trucks and have the biggest thumping sound system in it, you know, all these type of things. We get older and we realize that big thumping sound system is the reason we can't hear anymore. And we don't, we don't care about, you know, having a convertible top on the car because we don't have any hair for it to blow through any longer. I love you. Things change with our lives. <laughs> now, I got hair that's just gray. I have a wide part. Uh, yeah, I see that. Uh, yeah. You keep turtle wax in business, by the way. I love it. Things change with us. You know, we don't, we don't have the same desires that we used to. Do something different with your life. Look around you and see who you can bless. Here's the one thing that you can do. How about praying for somebody? How about giving your time to pray? God bless that person over there. Bless it. How about we today give our time to pray for families like this with autism? How about we give our time today to pray and say, God, we're willing to help financially in any other way. You show us as individuals what we can do to make a difference. How about we come and pray today and say, God, my children are grown. What can I do? What could I do? I've got time on my hands. How could I help? How could I make a difference? How could I volunteer? 
How can I spend some of my time to make a difference in my community so that through my community you get the glory? You see, we think, folks, and I'm done, we think that all of our service has to be done in the church. Well, if you're not a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, a, a Bible study leader, then you're not doing something. Listen, ministry is not supposed to be done exclusively in the church. Ministry is supposed to be done outside of these walls. We come here to gather instruction, to learn about Jesus, to pray with one another, to be edified, to be built up so that we can go out and change the culture. And that's what I'm challenging you to do. We just went through an election where everybody sat back and griped about it, what Every, you know how the culture had changed now we have the opportunity not because somebody's in the White House or not in the White House what will change our culture is Christian people going into the culture and engaging the culture not with politics but with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you can serve in a food kitchen or you can sort clothes or you can hand out canned foods or you can make a difference somewhere by volunteering your time to help a kid read. Or to volunteer to go to a school and, and help them meet a need there. And you can do it in Jesus' name. And we could change the culture. But we have a selfish world that's only looking at us. Me, 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 me. Will you be generous in a selfish world? Let's stand on our feet.